Okay, so we're continuing in our series of rigging module six, NCCER Millwright level two, picking back up on page 14, section 3.3.0, chain slings. Some jobs are better suited for chain slings than for wire, rope, or synthetic slings. Use of chain slings is always recommended for rough castings, something that may cut into something like this, or even the wire rope and damage it. Some of the other uses, high heat, um, chokers, wire rope chokers can withstand some of the heat, metal mesh can withstand some of the heat, but if they're there for a long period of time, it's gonna get damaged easier. Um, withstand abrasion and, and corrosion, and some of the other applications they talk about are marine and dredge applications because the chain, while it will rust when it comes out of the water, it will withstand in the water a lot better. For example, if we use the wire rope and the water got down inside to the core and rusted it inside there, then we wouldn't be able to see it as easily and inspect it as easily. That's what makes chains so much better in that application. Um, some of the information for sling, well, the sling angles and sling capacities apply to chains also. So, you know, the same angles we discussed in section 3.1.1, that capacity reduction also also applies to chains because that in that weight that is changing, putting more stress on the sling is going to apply to chains just like it would the others. The chain link, as they talk about, consists of two sides. What they're talking there is one side, one side, and the failure of either side caused the link to open and break and it would fall open because it would fall off the next link as it gets stretched and stretched. So wire rope is usually can, made of up to 114 different strands that have to slowly and damage and get broke. This is one and if it gets starts breaking, it's gonna go rather quickly. Chains will stretch under excessive loading, and that's what we talked about. Whereas if you can't move these back and forth freely, that means that, that link, one of those links has been overloaded, and this gets narrower, and this won't slide back and forth in between there. Um, weld should break. The, the links are welded. I don't know if you can see that in here, but there's a weld there where they're all welded together. If the weld breaks, obviously, you're in you're in trouble. So then they talk about annealing chains. Hoisting chains used in foundries should be annealed every two years to relieve work hardening. Work hardening is just the outside hardening of the metal. So what they do is they heat treat it and make it a little softer, make it a little more, more flexible. And that's done every two years. But at the end of that paragraph, it brings up a very important point that you need to remember if you're using chains in a foundry or in a hot place like that on a regular basis for lifting. After being annealed six times, the chain should be removed from surface. So we've changed it, we've hardened it, and then we softened it, hardened it, softened it. After six times, it's going to not be as strong, so we need to get rid of it. Chain sling storage is all the same stuff that we talked about with the other ones. Don't leave them on the ground. Keep them out of the weather so they don't rust, things like that. Um, some manufacturers suggest putting oil or grease on them. In my opinion, and in the book's opinion, it's not the greatest idea. It makes it more slippery to handle, plus it collects a lot of dust, especially in the de high desert environment around here. Oil and grease collect a lot of dust. Chain sling care and inspection, section 3.3.2. First off, we always start with the tag. What's it rated for? On the back side here, it gives us, and I know you can't read the numbers, but what's it rated for? We always have to start there. Um, annual inspections are required on chains different than the other ones because they can last for long, long periods of time. Like I said, in the foundries, they can go every two years before they're annealed, so the annual records have to come into play. Wear any portion of the chain worn by 15% or more. There's the standard again. So remember these numbers, 15%. Any wear of 15% in any one link. That's why they 
chains are not used on a regular basis because you have to be able to verify that you're able to inspect these and make them to it, make sure they're within the standards. And you have to measure the links and do all that to do it. So they don't get used as often. Stretch, chains will stretch over time. We'll talk about that a lot more when we do chains and belts in the power transmission class, but you would take a length, figure out what one length the actual length is, and then you would measure over 10 or 12 lengths and then divide that number and make sure that we haven't stretched. I believe they said 3%, yeah, 3% and is normal stretch. If we get to around 3%, we're still okay. But if we get up to 5%, that's when we have to replace it. Link condition, look for twisted, bent, cut, gouged, or nicked links. That one's pretty self-explanatory. Cracks, yeah, if we see any damage like that, it's a throwaway. Link welds, again, we talked about that earlier. End fittings, that's going to be whether there's a regular hook on there, a grab hook, which has the smaller opening for a chain. And to give you a good idea of grab hooks, this has shortener or grab hooks on it where we can shorten the length. The difference in the hook, see how much better that fits in there than this one fits on there. So, but we make sure that we have all of the end fittings inspected, the hooks, the safety latches, the master link, all of those things. And then the capacity tag like I talked about earlier. I always start with the capacity tag because if it's not there or if it's not legible, why would you continue on? Section 4 gets into taglines and taglines are a necessary component of any lift. We have to be able to control the movement of the lift, especially when we're using a crane. We can use them also with chain falls, chain hoists, uh, ratchet lever chain hoist, things like that. But the movement is usually a lot easier controlled when we're controlling the movement. But if we're using an electric or pneumatic chain hoist, we probably need to have that. We shouldn't say probably. We need to have that tagline in place. If we're using a crane to lift some, we need to have that tagline in place to control the movement of the load so that it doesn't swing into something, smash somebody, do whatever, things like that. It goes through a lot of talking about improper use of taglines, and then it goes through talking about different types of rope to use, different types of knots, things like that. Uh, one for knots. On page 17 on figure 21, there's a bunch of common rigging knots. We're not gonna go through them in here. You will be going through that in the core module nine, and Norm will be teaching that section, so you will have a better understanding of knots after that. Right now, just put a tagline on there and tie it off so it doesn't come loose, okay? And when you go through core module nine, there's a performance eval about tying knots, so that's why I leave it for then. As far as the type of rope, yeah, there's benefits, there's disadvantages, advantages, some, are, some conduct electricity, some don't, you know, you need to be a, aware of your surroundings and aware of what you're going to be getting into. The first thing I like to say before doing a load when lifting a crane, anything with a mobile crane, everybody look up. What's up there? Where are the power lines? They're usually up above the ground. Where are the electrical hazards? Up there. If we're going to be doing any of that work around electrical hazards, where's the easiest path to ground? The person holding the tag line. So make sure of what you're doing and make sure you're safe. Um, Next, you know, if there's water going to be involved, if there's rain, if it's nasty weather, things like that, remember the possibility of electrocution and with water saturated, so you need to be careful. They also talk about the size of the rope. Yes, that, that's important. The heavier the loads, the more we need to be able to maneuver that and manhandle that. But the last thing really, to me, the most important thing with taglines, one, you've got to be in sight of the person running the crane. And if you can't be in the line of sight with that, you need to make sure you're in line of sight with the person who's signaling. Second, you need to look at your surroundings before you ever start the lift and know where your mechanical advantage is going to be, where you're going to be able to pull, push, well, you're not going to push a rope, but where you're going to pull to stop the load from moving. And you need to keep yourself out of a position where the load could come and hurt you, could smash you in between there. You need to keep your, yourself safe. So 
big, long loads, heavy loads, we might have a tagline on each end. We're going to have to work as a team with the, both people to keep track of it. So again, it's common sense. It's use your head before you start. Before you make the lift, have everybody in place of where you're going to go. When this comes up and it starts moving, we're going to swing it this way. I'm going to stay over here so that I don't get smashed by this. I'm going to just basically stand out of the way because we're going to be swinging the load towards me. I'm just going to keep, I'm not going to keep any tension on it. The other person on the other side is going to keep the tension to keep it from slam, from moving too much. Conversations like that. So that's the section on taglines. We'll continue, I'll continue making videos and we'll keep going.